And so, mm, welcome to the, to the great undoing, the great undoing. Mm. The untangling of all of the threads of misunderstanding. Mm. Where does anything come from? Where does everything come from? When did anger first start? When did sadness first start? Hmm. <laughs> when did self-judgment and self-criticism even self-hatred start. Where does all that feels to be discordant and create suffering start? Where does it come from? Mm. You know, if we are to be truly free, the great undoing is to discover where where do these feelings, emotions, core beliefs come from? As much as we discover the grace of the being, we also have to discover where does everything that seems to obscure this truth come from? Why is it here? Hmm. that this unfolding is not about getting away from anything. It's not about hiding. It's such a full and profound intimacy with all that we are. So these difficult feelings that can arise, that can be holding as very strong protections, can be hiding emotions like anger and rage, and feelings of brokenness and wounding, violation, abuse, feelings of sadness, of not being seen, not being heard, feeling confused and afraid. Mm. Now, within the psychological realm, of course, we can speak a lot about these things, but as always, what if we boil it right the way down to the essence? What if we boil it right down and recognize that somehow we are love, we are love, we are light. And even though we are light, we are love, we are pure, we are divine, we somehow imagine that we are not. Let's get really curious. What on earth is going on? How can it be that we are love, that we are light, that we are one with God? And yet we can be living in the belief in these deeply held feelings and emotions and discordant and distortion, distortions. Can we see how important it is that we, we cannot avoid anything if we are to come to the remembrance of wholeness? That it is the most incredible, potent medicine of, of undoing is to face it all. And you know, the reason that we're speaking of this is because what we're really speaking about is undoing the program and the misunderstanding of separation, undoing the program that there's something wrong with me. So where these core beliefs and feelings and holding patterns 
where they started was in some kind of situations where essentially we felt threatened, we felt confused, we felt essentially that our needs were not being met. And what were our needs? Our needs, we could say, were to be mirrored in love. That our essential need was to see a reflection of our true nature in order to thrive, in order to be mirrored in love, in order to see ourselves, in order to be able to live the love that we are. Now, of course, part of it is that that we come in with karmic seeds, right? We've been doing this for many, many lifetimes and we come in. So it's not that it's all been created in this lifetime. And this is actually something that's very important is that it's, it's multi-lifetime. And that's why we can't always trace everything back to this lifetime. We can't totally make sense. But what we do know is the familiarity of certain feelings and emotions and behaviors and conditionings and triggers. We don't actually need to analyze and understand it. Although sometimes in the life, we can find ourselves in tangles where it can be useful. But of course, what we're speaking about here is what happens when we graduate out of the psychological realm of working things out, analyzing. Because in a way, what's happening there is that we're using the mind to heal. And we're, but we're still moving within a limited context. And what we're always speaking about here is healing in the unlimited context true healing and the true healing is like this great undoing now if these core beliefs and holding places and tensions like deeply held emotions deeply held wounded broken feelings, confused feelings, violated feelings, angry, furious feelings, if these are all trapped within us, what happens is that our, our way of living will be coming out of the frequencies of what's trapped inside us. And we've, we've learned to survive and get our needs met within the context of this tangled field of our functioning. We've learned to do our best. It's incredible. It's creative. And essentially, it's born out of survival. It's how we learn to survive, right? So to feel these places threatened feels like our survival is threatened, right? So when these places are stirred, a, a sense of threat arises. We could make that akin to the fight, flight, freeze response. Something is triggered. A trigger, a charge comes. Now, if these places originated in environments where we were not mirrored in love, where, we, where our needs were not essentially met, where we didn't feel safe, right? If these places arise in us, the threat comes when we don't feel safe, when we don't feel heard, we don't feel seen. This is where we come into contact with what's inside us, the, the frequencies that we're holding inside us. Now, if they started in environments where we didn't feel safe, we didn't feel seen, we felt confused, we felt misunderstood, we weren't feeling love and light being mirrored back to us. 
are these places now going to heal and resolve themselves in the same kind of environments? Are these places going to heal and resolve themselves where they don't feel safe? Are these places going to heal and reconfigure in an atmosphere where they feel like there's something wrong with you? Are these places going to open up and come forward if they don't feel safe? Of course not, right? It seems obvious. It's like everyone is, is like, of course not. But this is such an important, potent seeing to land. Because within our inner functioning, we have recreated the environment that we, that we grew up in. The collective consciousness is a raging, <laughs> imbalanced appearance of that collective discordance. It's all of that hidden emotions and beliefs presenting itself right on the surface of life. So is that an environment that we're going to get to the bottom and untangle and undo? Of course not. So what we're speaking in this is a different way of saying if we keep reaching into the external world are we going to find the antidote to all that seems to be discordant if we avoid these places are we going to find the antidote of course not This is why the profundity of stillness and silence is everything. Because when we stop, really stop, moving within the mental construct of problem solving and trying to fix, looking to the external world for solutions, what's really happening is that we're stopping the cycle that we were born into, and we've likely been living many lifetimes. We're stopping the cycle. And we're choosing something completely different. We're choosing to stop avoiding, stop denying, stop turning away and actually realize where does this stuff come from? We can continue to keep projecting it and blaming, blaming parents, bl blaming caretakers, blaming the world, blaming our ancestors, blaming just the way life is. But the thing is, all of that is, the, is part of the great imbalance of the collective that we have been we've been born into and, and we've been initiated <laughs> innocently by our, our parents and caregivers into. And it's only when we stop and we start questioning, like truly an unquestioned life is a life that's going to feel in bondage. And of course, the fact that we're here is because we are questioning life. But as we question life, we have to be willing to face on the level of taking absolute responsibility. And the taking absolute responsibility isn't a personal responsibility that, that exacerbates our self-judgment and criticism and self-hatred. 
It's not about cycling within the mind, within the blaming, projecting, and moving in the shame and guilt, the judgment, the criticism. It's about realizing where does all this stuff come from? <laughs> Recognizing, yes, the parents had these emotions. These parents had these stresses. The grandparents had it. The great grandparents. Everyone has it, right? The anger, the wounding, the feelings of violation, the feelings of not being seen. It's the human condition. It's shared. It's completely shared. We might have our own our own toxic cocktail, <laughs> but it's shared, it's absolutely shared. And such an enormous part of this unfolding is yes, recognizing the frequency of love and the presence of being, because this is essentially the only way out of the maze of the mind. We cannot heal in the, in the maze of the mind. We cannot heal in the collective. It's like within the collective, there's like a spiral, a vortex spiral, that because it can't get what it wants, it's like an angry child. And because it can't get what it wants, it's kind of spiraling in on itself because it's running out of possibilities. And so as it's running out of possibilities, it's creating more and more ways of trying to control more and more ways of, of disorder. And of course, we see that playing out in the pictures of the collective. It's the angry child that wasn't seen playing out on a mass macro scale. Are we going to heal that by joining that, blaming, entering the stories of that? Of course not. So we start to recognize the profundity of the stop, of the willingness to recognize that whatever I'm seeing on the screen is within me. If I'm seeing war and I'm engaging with a, with, with, with a belief that that's actually what I see, then there's a war inside me. If I'm seeing forms of abuse and my, and my system feels shock, then there's shock in me. It's that whatever we're seeing on the screen is not really out there in the way that we think it is. But we come to know that by meeting what is stirred in us. The whole appearance of the world is, is a visual, multi-sensory appearance of what's inside us. It's like a map of our human condition. The more that we come into the remembrance of the frequency of love, we might see the pictures, but we know that it's only love. So we don't engage on the level of story. We, we know what that is. And this is how we be the change. It's to recognize that within the human condition, within what is held within us, what has been pushed down, hidden, not allowed, not seen. The only one that can see it is you. We have to see ourselves, right? It's like part of this unfolding, the great glorious undoing, is this willingness to meet all of ourselves, all that we are fully. And that means not projecting and blaming. And it also means not allowing that projection and blame to be upon ourself in shame and guilt and doubt and, and embellishing this, this great belief that is the misunderstanding, that is separation, which is the belief that there's something wrong with me that there's something wrong here. 
And essentially, perhaps we can trace back and realize that as a child, we would have, we would have felt like there's something wrong here. Because the mirroring of the love and the light and the freedom and the joy of our true nature is not coming back to us. And what happens is, in, in its sim most simplistic terms, is that we think, well, it must be me. There must be something wrong with me. And then off we go. The life begins. And the tangle, the tangled web, starts to form itself. And so what we come to realize is that these places are not going to give themselves up to more of the same discord. These places, it's like shut down, covered up, created a shell, like an armoring, a protection. It's like a protection over the soft center, over the love, the light, the beauty, the joy, the wonder, the awe, that natural childlike. Wow, right? So the shell is created over that soft center, but that soft center doesn't harden. It's just a shell, just an armoring, just a guarding, keeping safe, what is sacred, keeping holy, what is pure. So we're looking for the missing piece out there, but the missing piece, the soft center, the intimacy, the love, the light, it's right inside our innermost core. So it's like, as we open to the presence of being, yes, we are opening to the infinite, eternal, expansive everything. We're opening to the one, to the glory. But in our direct experience, what we're opening to is our direct connection to that. When we feel the presence, the stillness, the silence, we're opening to recognize, I have a direct connection to source, and this is it. I can feel the source here. I can feel the stillness. I can feel my, my center. I can feel the wide openness, the freedom. I can feel something that's not touched. How profound, how beautiful. And it's like it starts to come online. This is what I want. This is what's true. We recognize truth because we are truth. We recognize love, light. We recognize the frequency because we are it. And this is our core. This is our deep center. It's the connection that's never been broken. It's our innocence. It's our supreme knowing. It's right in the core. Hmm. So we come back in contact with this. And of course, we want to grow this. We want to grow this. And as we grow this and we start to resonate at this frequency, it feels so beautiful. It feels like a remembrance. It feels like this is what I've always been. This is what I'm longing for, this. Yes. And yet just knowing this doesn't necessarily dissolve the armoring, the guarding. And yet we found a connection. We found a resonance of remembrance. In the stillness, in the silence, 
It's like we can always come to this refuge. Ah, right? And so in the stillness, in the silence, we deepen this. We, we can open and root more and more into the, the fine frequencies, opening to the absolute, opening to remember. And it feels so free. It feels so beautiful. And yet what we can notice is that quirky things in life still happen. And when things in life still happen, when we have moods or emotions or resistances or stresses come up, where we feel like we're suffering, we feel like, oh, I've lost it. I've lost the connection. I'm doing something wrong. And there we see, there it is. I'm doing something wrong. I'm failing. I've lost. Something, something, something's happened. This, this, this is not okay anymore right? It's like we, it's like we enter into that program. We enter into that program of the mind that, that thinks it's, a, it's an authority that starts saying, yeah, you've done this wrong and you've done that wrong. You're not sitting enough. You're not trying this. You're not working hard enough. You're not committed enough, whatever it is. You're just angry. You're just angry. You're never not going to be angry. You're never going to run out of anger, right? You don't even belong. Like, you know, that's not even for you, right? You just had an experience. Just get on with your life, right? So many ways that that interceptor can come in. So what we're highlighting is how, how that interceptor can act as an authority where the mind can, can be thinking that it knows what this is all about. And yet it doesn't. It never does. It never, ever does. where we feel the connection to truth, to love, to the being, to the presence, in the stillness, in the silence, in the stop. It's like we're coming underneath this layer, this, this foggy layer of Maya. We're coming underneath and we're dropping into the true essence nature. We're dropping into the frequency of remembrance. And once we drop into this frequency of remembrance, we never lose it. As we remember, the remembrance remains. It's like reconnecting, like reconnecting the circuits. And once the circuits are reconnected, that, that connection remains. Even if it seems obscured, the connection remains, right? So whatever it seems like is happening, the opening in consciousness of consciousness to itself, of the being to itself is never obscured, even if it feels to be obscured. As we open to this remembrance, the remembrance is never obscured. But the mind can act and bring forward narratives that are rooted in fear, rooted in the sense of lack, that are committed to keeping that alive. And the commitment to keeping that alive is out of a misguided sense that this is some kind of safety. Because opening to the being and this frequency of remembrance, it doesn't have safety in the way the mind is looking for safety, because it's the unknown. It's unknown, it's uncontrollable. It, it can't be, it can't be fathomed. And yet it's always here. So 
So what we're speaking of in the great undoing is a, is a rebalancing act. It's a deep inner rebalancing. And the rebalancing requires that we, that we have this remembrance of the fine frequency of the being. That we, that we know that in the stillness, in the silence is a refuge of remembrance a clarity and a peace. And that this is ever deepening. Whatever seems to be obscuring it, it's always shining. It's only weather patterns that are coming in. And so, as we come to recognize and remember this frequency, it's as if the armoring and the protection, you know, some of it, it just falls away in the presence of the light. Depending how deep this clarity is, big chunks of it just fall away, right? It's not about retracing your whole life. It's not about retracing the steps because so much just falls away in the light. The, the repatterning happens in the light of remembrance. But there will be parts of this armoring and there will be places that have learned to protect and hold on that will try to hold on very, very strongly because these places are waiting for a frequency of safety, a frequency of love, an atmosphere, an environment of purity, of divine love. Because these places are, in a way, safe because they know in that innermost core the truth. And these places are not separated from this truth. It's actually the complete opposite. They're guarding this truth. Right? So we could say that the greatest repression that we have is not the anger, the guilt, the shame, the sadness, the hurt, the wounding, the greatest repression that we have is the repression of the light and the love that we are. At the core, what we're really repressing is, is, is the true nature. And the true nature is this soft center that's hidden in this, in this shell. And this shell is like a pattern of discordance that holds the sense of shame and guilt, the sense that I've done something wrong, the doubt, the anger. Everyone has anger in there, confusion, fury. But we were shut down in the young lives where, where we had natural responses, natural like animal-like responses to situations, we were told you can't behave like that. You can't feel that. No, 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 you mustn't do that. Not so loud, dry those tears. On so many levels, we weren't given permission and allowed to be as we, as we were. We weren't allowed to, to move like a creature, right? with our natural responses. Our natural responses, our intuitive knowing was shut down. And it's like this shell, this armoring, just kind of gained and gathered its, its holding patterns. And in a way, the life is, is lived from this. So when we open to the great glory, we feel so good, we feel free of all that stuff. And then we get surprised, oh, it's, it's still here. Oh, I still behave in those ways. I still have protections. We can even find ourselves being shamed by teachers for having those patterns, right? And that kind of behavior happens when 
the, the teachers, the guides are, have their own holding patterns and haven't fully explored, right? So they're feeling uncomfortable, right? And it doesn't only happen in those scenarios, but in all relationships, that if you bring your feelings forward, that your, your friend, your companion, your partner might say, like, stop, don't know, don't, 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 don't feel like that. Don't be like that. That's not okay. And in a way, what we could say is that we're holding these frequencies inside us. So we're creating scenarios that are repeating, right? Essentially, it's not coming from the external. It's coming from what's within us always. We're creating the characters. We're, we're creating the cast of characters. We even project it upon God upon the divine, right? We can even feel like the divine is, is telling us, you're not allowed to be angry. It's not divine to be angry. It's not divine. But of course, that's not really what the divine is saying. It's our mental interpretation of what the divine is through religions and spirituality and, and just ideas that we've taken on. We've taken on this idea that divi the divine is telling us, you're not allowed to behave like that. That's not okay. The way that you are is not okay. So all of these messages coming to us, essentially it's being born out of these frequencies that we're carrying and that we can be, have been carrying for, for many lifetimes. So we're painting the picture so that we can just start to really see how deeply entrenched these patterns are, how deeply entrenched these feelings are, these beliefs are, and how we, how we come to realize that none of this is going to give itself up fully to anything other than the frequency of perfect love, of divine love. None of this is going to give itself up. Let the armoring, the guarding down until it feels safe, until it feels the safety that it didn't feel as a child. So essentially what we're dealing with is a sense of not feeling safe, a sense of feeling of, of threat. And when anything in our life triggers that feeling it will trigger the emotions what will often then happen is some kind of interceptor will come in that will say push that down i don't want to deal with that that's not okay or or will just totally not just be so disconnected from those feelings even no 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 there's nothing wrong with me right? But like passive, like a passive overlay. No, there's nothing wrong. But somehow inside there is something that's stirred. So many subtleties and nuances to it. But essentially, it's just coming to the big picture and the essence. And what we're really pointing to is that these places are only going to open and express themselves where they feel safe. We often don't even feel safe with ourselves. It's like we even have to open up to feel safe with ourselves to actually admit, well, actually, yes, I am angry. Yes, actually, I am feeling really, really broken. I'm actually feeling really a lot of self-hatred. Like we almost can't even face what we're feeling within ourselves. So even to come into contact with this depth of feeling is incredibly profound and only actually happens as we're opening to the fine frequency of being. It's this rooted knowing of our true nature and the remembrance that's coming online and the rebalancing that's happening that even allows us to come into contact 
with, with some of these places. We cannot even really know the depth of feelings that, that are in there until we, until we allow, inquire, and we allow, a, we truly allow an expression to come through us that isn't held back by ideas, isn't held back by these interceptors that are telling us, imposing upon us, holding agendas for us, and that we are so full of these agendas even upon ourselves, right? You know, this process, in a way, the mind can be like, oh, this is horrible. This, like, I don't want to go into this. But when we really start to open to the, to the love that we are and the presence of being and the grace of all of this, we actually realize this, this is, this is so profound. This is, this is freedom. This is grace. To come into connection with the deepest realms of yourself is anything but horrible. Anything but what the mind says about it. It's actually the most extraordinary love that's reaching in to these armored places. It's the presence of unconditional love reaching in. It's the light getting in. It's anything but horrible. In a way, we're so programmed to be, oh, this is intense. This is hard. This is, this is really challenging. This is a nightmare. This is, I don't want to do this. And, and there might be places in us that do feel that. And that's okay, because we can meet fear. We can meet feelings that feel daunted or like, oh, this again, or this is repeating. But ultimately, the grace of it is, is that when we come to connect into these places within us, we're actually coming into connection, not even in psychological functioning, like, oh, here's another therapy session where you're going to have to regurgitate your story. It's not even that. It's like, this is a moment where, yes, some feelings may come forward, but this is a moment where love, unconditional love, it's like this is a moment of, of rescue, <laughs> of divine rescue, right? This is a moment of salvation. This is a moment of something so profound that love is, is here. You are that love. And love is here. And love is offering the possibility for you to actually be as you are. Feel what you feel. Express what wants to be expressed. That love is here and it wants to hear whatever you want to bring forward, that nothing, nothing is being imposed upon you. There's no agenda upon you. And in a way, this starts to happen within our internal functioning. And yes, in the process, we can have companionship where we start to open and explore this and be guided and held. Grace brings forward exactly what is needed. But at the root of it, there's this autonomy where we start to realize that we have this capacity to open to all that we are and that none of it is actually personal, that in a way the meeting and the releasing of it the feeling of it is, is a great service to the whole because the patterns that we think that we're holding as personal on a micro level, the frequencies that we're holding 
are tang a part of a tangle of the macro of the collective. And as we free the tangle within our functioning and our, our identification with the personal, we're freeing it for the macro, for the whole. in the collective. So there's something so profound that happens that we're not speaking about the heaviness of processing. We're not speaking about psychological functioning. We're, we're speaking about freeing ourselves and having the power to free ourselves and to free the frequencies that are binding us in the misunderstanding that we're separate from the divine. We're freeing ourselves, like taking down the guarding and the protection that is over our soft center. We're taking down the, the, the scaffolding, the structures and the strategies that are over the soft center, but we're not taking them down by force. We're not storming. <laughs> the castle. We're not trying to break down the barricades from the outside. We're releasing the barricades of our protection from the inside. And this is what is so different, is that we're, we're letting go from the inside. We're softening from the inside. We're not dismantling it from the outside. We're dissolving all of the layers that we've put up on our terms when we are ready in the presence of safety, of love, of a frequency of divine remembrance. We're softening and letting go of all of the barriers that we have created to love all of the barriers that we've created between our soft center and the light, because the feeling of separation is the feeling of being the soft center that's kind of peeping out from the barricade of protection, right? It's like, okay, I'm in here. I know my true nature. The world is not safe not trustworthy. There's nothing out there, right? <laughs> like we do our best. We enter relationships. We get out there, but we're like this. Yeah, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. You make put a foot wrong and I'm out of here, right? Yeah, I've got my eye on you. Critical, right? I hear you. We're getting triggered. We're moving. So we're not, we're not coming at you, right? Nothing's coming at you from the outside. It's like from here, we can be like, okay, that looks like a practice. That looks like someone that, I, that can help me. That looks like a technique. That looks like something. And we kind of reach out, but we're still in here. We're still behind the barricade and we're reaching out. We're taking the hand. We're kind of engaging, and then it's like, yeah, I'm back in here. Because it feels like that is coming at you, trying to break down your barricade from the outside, and it doesn't work, right? So we're testing, we're testing, and we're letting down the barricades. We can put them up again, we can bring them out. What's happening is that this is the we we are choosing to soften. We are choosing to let go. And when anything feels like we're making a reach to the external, it doesn't work because it's trying to break down from the outside. And the only way this barricade is going to break down is when we are illuminated from within when we choose, when we feel safe, when there's a readiness, we let go of the protections. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm opening my petals. 
I'm ready to flower, right? I feel the warmth, I feel the frequency, and I'm opening my petals, right? Right, so we're testing, we're testing, we're getting ready to flower. It's, a, it's this dance, this rebalancing. And as we're coming out, as we open the layers, we find kind of crusty old things in there, feelings, emotions, but we start to realize in order to flower, I'm going to have to face all of the feelings of vulnerability, right? There's that beautiful quote that speaks about um, in this, like flowering in this life, the courage that it takes to flower and the power of that over remaining a tight bud, right? I don't ever remember quotes word for word, but it's by Anais Nin. And it's, it's, it's speaking to this, right? That will we remain a tight bud? Will you, will you remain uncorked, like cork, let's say, for the whole life? Will you let your cork pop and your effervescent bubbles overflow? Will you remain as that tight bud? Because to flower takes, it's this journey that we're speaking of, that we spoke of yesterday across the bridge of hair over the chasm of fire that Irina Tweedy spoke of, right? It's this, to flower, it requires that we enter our own heart. How can we flower without the fullness of our own heart shining, right? What kind of flower would we be, right? <laughs> to flower wholeheartedly, it's like we have to enter into the realms of our own heart, all of the deepest caverns. And the mind might say, yeah, I don't want to do that work. I've done it before. I'm not interested. And that's fine because that just means the protection is tight and there's not a readiness. And that's okay because love doesn't say, I'm coming at you with a bulldozer, right? I'm coming at you. I'm going to break down those barriers. I'm going to find that soft center inside you. No, love says, when you're ready, when you're ready, you'll shine. When you're ready, you'll shine. Because love knows that you are love. Love knows. Love only sees the love that you are. Love has no expectations of you. Love has no agenda for you. Love's not imposing anything upon you. Love knows. Love's like, I gotcha, right? We're one. We're one in the heart. One in the heart. And the more that you feel that love has gotcha, love is with you, love sees you, love's mirroring you, love says, whenever you're ready, you shine. You're shining right here. And in your perfect moment, you will flower. Love doesn't need anything from you, right? And as we feel the presence of love, we start to feel a, a certain safety. We start to feel the flowering in the heart. We start to feel the resonance of love coming online, the, the presence of being, the frequency of being coming online. It feels infinite and expanded because it is it's not infinite expanded out there in the world. It's infinite and expanded inside the heart. The heart is infinite. We are one in the heart and your heart knows. Your soft center knows. And so when all of the craziness starts to come online, as we start to open, it's like we have to go through this thick layer of fog and that will be different for every being, but let us know there's something so profound about getting to the feelings of anger and hatred, self-hatred, of self-judgment. We don't come to these places without having a readiness for it. 
the mind can feel like, oh my God, this is awful. I can honestly tell you it, it's, it's a celebration to come to these places. Honestly, from my experience, it's a celebration when you actually have reached a point that you, you've, you're cracking open enough that you find something really dark. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't feel good when you find it. But when you find something that feels really gnarly, it's the most extraordinary grace because it's some deep, dark corner that's being reached by the light in your own inner sanctuary, your own inner safety. No one's asking anything from you. It's just this incredible possibility to let that cycle run of purification. Let the purification happen. Let that place within you not be dampened by any ideas that you need to be any different, that you need to shut it down, that it's wrong that you're finding these places. If we can meet these places with love, if we can allow these places to actually express themselves, to actually, you know, sometimes, of course, we need companionship and holding and witnessing to, to, to open to some of these places. And the right support comes in always. Sometimes it will mean that we have to reach through a conditioning and reach out for help. But we know when we need support and it will always be here. Essentially, the divine support is always here and we can always reach into the divine support. But sometimes that will need to translate to companionship, guidance, holding. And it will always come in exactly the right configuration that is needed, right? But essentially, we also have the, cap the, the capacity to, in a way, witness ourselves, right? One thing that was discovered here in the unfolding was that there's this capacity to watch what's opening and to express, let this part express almost like feeling the this, the stability of the awareness, the safety. And in the presence of the safety within our inner functioning, this part can actually enter. Oh, yeah, I feel horrible, I feel horrible. Self-hatred arising, self-hatred arising. I hate you, I hate you, right? It can start to actually speak because it's got the presence right and you will know in your inner functioning whether you have this capacity to let this place open up and just express let the wisdom of this place because when we have the knowing this is not happening to me now this is a young part can this young part be allowed to have its voice, the voice that it couldn't have when it was young, instead of an interceptor coming in that says, you stop that, don't be angry, go to your room, right? You're, you're, you're not to come out until you've calmed down, until you've settled down, right? No, 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 that's not acceptable behavior. Go to your room, right? And sometimes, in, in can be in, in quite aggressive ways, right? So we learned that. But what if that little voice has been waiting all this time for the moment to be able to say, ah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever. And that within our inner functioning, that we can allow these places to be expressed and realize that they're not scary and that they don't need to be stopped. that they can be mirrored with a holding of love that just silently says, love is here, love is here, you are safe, 
You are seen. You are safe. You are seen. There is no threat here. There is no threat here. You are safe. You are held. Love is here. And of course, it only happens when this softening is happening within us, right? It's not coming from the outside. Break it down, break it down, break it down, right? It's not coming from the outside. It's coming from this readiness, the softening and opening and insight and the feelings are like thawing out. These places are thawing out, right? And they're allowed and love welcomes them. Love loves. It's like the inner child being welcomed within our inner functioning. We're welcoming these places. And what we find in is these, these places haven't just been in the deep freeze for this lifetime. They've been in the deep freeze of the unconscious for many lifetimes. And so things can come forward that don't make sense. And this is why we, we don't need to analyze or make sense or try to contextualize. It's just about allowing it. And when we allow it, it will usually always just complete itself or fall in to some kind of illumined seeing, right? So we're just opening all of this up because when we really, really want to come to freedom, when we're really committed in our heart to this, the commitment isn't to anything outside. It's not a commitment to a sangha. It's not a commitment to anything external. It's not a commitment to a process. It's not a commitment to, to anything external. It's a commitment that comes like a fire inside you that says, oh, in this life, in this life, this soul, this soul is ready for the next step of evolution. This soul is ready to meet the discordant patternings, the karmic patternings and obscurations. This soul is ready to shine as the love that it knows itself to be. Because the soul is, is like this deep knowing of the being, this, this light within that knows there's only love. This is all a dream. It's a gong show, <laughs> right? It's like the soul knows that. None of this is personal. And it's, it's the readiness of the consciousness, the, the soul consciousness within. It's where the consciousness is in its evolution that is about the readiness. It's not a readiness that we can force from outside. It's a readiness that comes from this center, the soft center that we've been protecting, right? It's about allowing where the recognition of a frequency of safety and that safety comes in companionship but more profoundly it comes as we open to the presence of being the knowing of our true nature we start to feel a safety in that we have a refuge in the knowing the remembering of the infinite eternal we have a refuge in recognizing that there's a part of us that is undisturbable, has never been disturbed. And, and you know, even everything that we're speaking, none of it is a doing. We're pointing to things that are happening in the field. The expression is like narrating what's happening in consciousness. So many of you will recognize that what is being spoken of is already happening. It's already happening 
there's a there'll be a recognizing that you're somewhere in this this unfolding this great undoing and the speaking is of the whole field the frequencies of the whole field and it's it's let's say it's the wide open frequency of love where we are one inviting from the inside a finer attunement and remembrance, a recognition of the light that is shining inside, that you have this light shining, and that as you recognize that you are this frequency of love, you are this light, you recognize that you have the capacity, the power of the infinite eternal being through your innermost core knowing through your soft center you open to the infinite eternal frequency of the divine you remember your divinity and here then you have the you have the capacity and power to soften and illuminate from the inside right it's all happening from the inside this is happening from the inside. The joining is this knowing that whatever shape is your protection and is your strategy, that from the inside, the light starts to grow in its remembrance and be able to permeate and penetrate and illuminate all of the places that have being armored and guarded and protected and holding conditionings, right? So when we say, where, where did anger start? Where did sadness start? What is that? What is that feeling of brokenness? What is that feeling of, of woundedness? that feeling of, of, of being violated somehow. What is that in the nervous system, that discordance? And instead of making it wrong or pushing it away, can we welcome it with all of the heart of the infinite love and actually trace it back and invite it to be here in its fullness? in its full expression, without any threads of making it wrong, like a total allowing, an unconditional allowing and acceptance. That the beauty is that we don't need to find that in the world. We cannot find that in the world. We can only find that as we reconnect to our own soft center, which is our own innocence and knowing. And this is where the deepest protections and afflictions will be able to let go when they're not upon anyone else's schedule, that their absolute allowing and loving presence brings a recognition of safety because in the presence of safety, it's like we remember the innocence and childlike wonder and awe. We actually remember the humility of a child that's unprotected and free. We remember the innocence and playfulness of the child that is innocent and free. And we start to live as this frequency of awe and wonder and love and light and pure creativity and inspiration, right? We start to live from the shining of our innermost soft center, the innermost being, right? And 
this is what we are all longing for. Whatever our protections say, the innermost core is longing. And that's why, you know, when we are inquiring, we say, well, what does this protective place really want? What does this protected place really want? And it says, it wants to shine. It wants to be seen. Of course it does. It wants to know love without condition. Of course it does. It wants to feel connected to the divine and feel free and, and untamed. Of course it does, right? Because this is the true nature. This is the true nature of every being. This is the truth of who we are. This is the light, the luminosity, the radiance of a heart that is free and at peace, right? And the thing is, is that we're not searching for something out there. Enlightenment, awakening, right? Experiences, no. What enlightenment really is, is to remember that right at the center of all that you are, underneath all of the layers of protection, you are light. And in a way, enlightenment is just to remember that you're shining under there. You're shining from inside here. Truth is, you're shining and you're holding yourself back from shining because you haven't yet been met and mirrored in the glory of your true light. So what we are inviting is a certain level of meeting that for sure, but we're inviting that we only truly meet that within us. No one out there is going to mirror us. It's like returning to the origin within us, the innocence within us. It's like within our companionship, we can, we can mirror that. We can mirror that and you can feel that frequency of love, of allowing, of holding. And in a way that acts as a bridge. It acts as a bridge into your own innermost core because the final part of this unfolding, crossing that bridge of hair, <laughs> right, happens at the point where we enter the innermost chasms of our own heart. We enter our own heart as the light, as the love, as the safety. It's like we bring ourselves home to ourselves. We return to the source. We return to the innocence. We return to the remembrance of true self. That to remember true self is to remember the one self, the one light that we have always been, right? So when we are meeting some of these feelings that can arise, and I know that some of you have been reporting feeling, feelings, you know, really intense feelings of shame or guilt or self-hatred and feeling really in the darkness. And you see, if the mind gets hold of this, it kind of spirals itself into a safety that says, yeah, stay here in the darkness, <laughs> right? Because here in the darkness, you're in the quagmire of your protection. This, this darkness is your protective realm. And what's being invited is that we recognize that if we identify with the protection, we just stay protected, we stay the tight bud. But our heart is longing, longing, right? So we're, we're feeling the feelings. And it's like, can we feel those feelings? Can we, can we make the reach within, right? 
when there's a sense of being really stuck in the darkness, really stuck in the intensity, it's like, what is the inner reach that we can make, right? We have to make it, we have to, we have to, let's say, invite a reach that is doable. Because if we invite a reach that feels like too much of a stretch, in here we're like, yeah, that's all very well for you. I don't have that possibility in here, right? So we've got to make a reach. We have to make a reach that this innermost sense of protection can enter into itself. And that reach is, is to invite, can you feel what is aware right now? Can you feel that there's something watching? And this inner place might say, yes, I can. And it's like, it's like drowning and receiving like a little buoy, a little rubber ring, you know, oh, I can hold on to this, right? I'm not drowning anymore. Could we make the reach from this innermost place? Can you, can you feel a sense of the divine here? Can you feel your longing for the divine? Right? And we have to recognize that sometimes within our protection, we've also put on a protection from the divine. So when we enter the longing, it's like we enter the atmosphere through our own heart. Right? It's not like, can you call out to God from in here? Because we're likely to say, yeah. Yeah. God kind of let me down already. That's why I'm in here. Okay. So we don't want to necessarily be like, yeah, great glory, mother, come, come. We're right in here. The way that we make the reach is, can you feel the longing in here? Yeah, I can. And again, like a little crack will happen. It's like you open to the divine atmosphere in your own heart, right? It's like we have to make a reach within. Can you feel the feelings? Can you observe? Can you allow the sensations? Can you come underneath the narrative and just feel the sensations as aliveness? Yeah, I can. I can feel just the sensations. Right. Opening subtle little openings we make that reach inside because as soon as that reach as soon as we have a little something a little bit of light it's like stay with the light stay with the light tell me about the light right we ask this inner place tell me about the light tell me about the being tell me about the awareness Oh, right? Suddenly the attention from being closed in starts to look around the landscape. Oh, the light is everywhere. The presence is here. How does it feel? It feels free. It feels still, right? So we make the reach and we start to open. We start to allow that frequency of love, of light to come online. It's like we, 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 we honor the crack that is opening, right? We recognize that even if it's just a crack, that that crack is truly where the light gets in. And if we focus upon the crack, we start to see the power of the light beams coming in. We start to feel the frequency of love. Mm. And everything starts to reconfigure that there's this total allowing. We're not saying the reach isn't, don't feel those feelings. It's not, the reach is not, oh, overlay that with a positive affirmation. Overlay that, think of something good, right? It's, it's not asking this place that feels stuck 
to be anything other than stuck. It says, okay, you're stuck, but what else is here? What else is here? And of course, we can say to this place, right in the darkness, right in the center of this self-hatred and depression, what is this place truly longing for? Right in the center of the shame, what is this place that feels so dark longing for? And this place will usually say, well, it's longing for some light. It's what longing for love. It's longing to feel better. Okay. And what does better look like? Well, it looks like feeling held. It looks like not feeling so alone. Okay. Okay. Can you feel, just to start with, that presence is here, right? We just, again, we just open to the little reach, the little reach that is possible. Hmm. Because inside the innermost core of whatever ever is ever arising is the soft center, is the innocence is that which has never been tainted or disturbed. And of course, another reach can be, if we can make it, that we, that we open to the presence of being and we feel the undisturbed. Now, feeling the undisturbed is like, me, is like the life raft, right? It's like, here's the rescue. Can you feel the undisturbed? Yes, right? Things open more. Can you feel that which has never been touched? Yes. Ah, right? Things start to soften. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So just noticing as we are speaking, as we are sharing, of course, what is speaking and what is listening is the same. We're deep in the inner realms of consciousness, just bringing forward all of the threads that are in the field here so that every companion that is here can feel the support and the grace. And you know what happens in this is like this gorgeousness is that as the speaking speaks your heart, your heart feels heard. Your heart feels seen. It's happening within the consciousness, right? It's not someone seeing someone else. Within the flow of the sharing, the consciousness is seeing itself. It's meeting itself and it's reflecting itself so that the heart feels seen. The heart feels safe. The heart feels like, oh, yes, that's what I've been experiencing. Oh, yes, that's the answer to the question that I've been asking, or oh, that's speaking to exactly what I've been noticing. And whatever, wherever you are in the great undoing, the heart feels seen, it feels known, right? It's knowing itself within your inner functioning, and it feels known. And it's like we, we join more deeply in the resonance of the knowing, because the knowing is one. Your knowing is my knowing, is our knowing, is the grace of pure knowing, right? It's one. We are one in the heart. And one in the heart, we are one in love. We are one in the peace of the heart. And this consciousness, all it wants is to know itself. And so the speaking, the sharing is just its way. It's unique way it has of coming to know itself and connect with itself. It, it wants, it longs for all parts of itself to feel unified in the field, right? It wants, it longs, it longs for itself, right? This is the place where it can arise, the, the recognition that no one is ever free until we are all free because that longing of the heart is that longing that says, I want all of myself. 
I, 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 I'm longing for the wholeness. And it's like that longing in the unified field to know, well, what is free knows freedom. But the longing of, of wholeness is for its, its whole self. It's part of the magnetic pull is that frequency that says, I am whole because I never divided. I am whole and undivided. And yet on the, on the realm where there can be, be a belief in division, I long for myself to feel whole. And I will move in any way that supports this knowing coming right to the surface of life, right into the human realm, right? I will, I will offer myself in whatever service, whatever dharma is needed as an instrument, as a vehicle of service, I will move in whatever way to deepen uh, the impersonal consciousness knowing itself, right? So wherever we are in this unfolding, we are, we're in the flow of service to the whole. We're in flow of service to the whole as we are in allegiance with love, in allegiance with this great unfolding. And we're working, we're being worked multidimensionally right? So we can know the wholeness of wholeness that's never been divided. And we can feel the sense of the unique human experience that can sometimes feel so personal and so painful and so intense. And we can know both. We can know everything and, and everything in between. And in a way, our great unfolding into the one is knowing ourself in every single area, every single realm. And that's why within a human experience, this, this unfolding never gets old. <laughs> it never ends. It's infinite. We never, we never arrive within the human experience because there's always more. There's always other dimensions to explore. There's always different ways that will be used in service. There's always more. And that's the glory that we're supposed to be living fully creative and inspired and exploring so that we never get tired of being curious. We never get tired of questioning. What is at the root of that? Where is that coming from? right? That we're always, always open to that to the, 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 there's something that we, that we haven't seen, right? Because then we're really coming to a depth of radiance in our, the possibility of our souls shining on the surface of life. And our soul light joining, <laughs> on the surface of life in companionship. We're supposed to be in companionship, right? We will each have different laws of nature that will need a little bit more alone time, a little bit more companionship, and we follow that. It plays out as introvert and extrovert, and we follow that. We follow. You don't have to be outward and, and, and in companionship all the time. You don't have to be inward, and you don't have to take to the cave in the Himalayas in order to be free. It's to live your true nature. Don't try to be anyone else because for you to, to truly shine, to truly flower, it's like each of us has to flower, our unique flower. We have to sing our unique song and dance our unique dance, fully bring the inspiration that we're here to bring to the surface, right? So thank you, thank you for being here and being
being the grace that brings this forward and the presence to remain animated as the sharing comes. It's exciting. It's exciting to be living this life, right? Some beings, if you're living in fear, you might say, oh my God, what an atrocious time on this planet. Everything's going, everything's going to part. Like, you know, we could be in fear of all kinds of crazy scenarios if we buy into it. But the truth of the heart in the frequency of love, this is the most extraordinary, exciting time to be in a human experience. It's extraordinary because the possibility of where the evolution of consciousness is means that we can fully take part on the surface of life and flower. It's like we have this possibility of seeing through the karmic obscurations and clearing the debts of lifetimes and actually <clears throat> freeing the soul from, you know, even the soul is bound. The, 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 the individual soul is bound. So we can express the individual soul light. But in this unfolding, when we really come to our, the remembrance of divinity, we're freeing even the individual soul from its cycles of karma back into the universal soul, back into the glory, right? And what is likely for many of us in our journeys because of where things are, what, what's happening for us, is that we've had evolutions and, and lives where we have freed, we freed ourselves in certain ways. But in order to truly be free into the divine, to take this unfolding all the way and free the soul into the glory, to not be reincarnated, right, recycled, <laughs> that we have this possibility. Wow, right? So are we worried about the craziness of the surface of life? It's like just as we've been speaking, when the crazy stuff arrives in your inner landscape, it's grace. And just as when it, the crazy stuff arises on the surface of life, it too is a grace. It's showing us that the consciousness is being shaken up, that love is, 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 is shaking everything up. And yes, fear is hanging on for its dear life. But what we know from everything that we're expressing and feeling the truth of today is that the softening love is infiltrating the imbalance from inside where no one, no one, can touch this, right? No one can, can take this freedom, right? Because this freedom, the ranks, the armies of love are, are building from the inside, right? It doesn't matter what it looks like on the surface of life. The armies of love, the collaboration of love, the fellowship of love is coming together on the inside and this is how the power imbalance is going to tumble, right? Because the, what's going to happen is that the power imbalance will eventually tumble into the arms of love. It won't tumble into kind of prisoner of war camps and, and hatred and judgments. Everything will, will tumble into the arms of a love that has been waiting for the great imbalance of separation to collapse, right? And then we enter a whole new paradigm of human experience. We enter a whole new frequency of what human life is that we can't even know that because it's never happened, right? So we can't we can't know that. Great glory. Great glory. Hallelujah. 